This is, I think, our blackest snake right now, probably. You can see the iridescence right here. If I took her outside, you would see the rainbow, you know, of, of iridescence on the snake. She's, we slow grew her. She's got some nice size in her now. And I think, I think she might go this year. I think she's, I think she's got the mature muscle on her. I'm feeling, uh, we're gonna try to breed her for sure. What's up guys, Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily and we are getting started today, bright and early. We're going into the snake room. We're gonna take a look at, uh, who knows what we're gonna take a look at actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> I know we have to do some cleaning above some big boas, Pablo and I, so we'll probably get a couple big boas. Uh, you know, the breeding season is coming up very shortly. Usually for boas, I usually start November 1st. For ball pythons, we usually start pairing now. So, um, so where you are, we just we kind of took a, like a three week break um, because I was, I kind of pair ball pythons now almost all year round, but I'm going to, I took a three week break. I think we're going to start pairing now our adults come this week. Hopefully my, um, my rat guy, Matt is back in business. I know he lost a lot of his buildings in this storm here and uh, that could affect some of our live rats and that's what the ball pythons like to eat. So I don't even know where we're at with that. So that's going to be something we're going to have to take a look at. It's, uh, it's tough when you have a really bad storm and you have a lot of damage. A lot of people still don't have electricity. People don't have homes here. So we were lucky we got electricity back. We're all working, but you know, now the food supply might be limited. So that's something we have to look at. The good thing is the boas don't have to eat in the off, in the off season when they're, or I should say the breeding season. Uh, we give them a nice eight to 10 week break, but the ball pythons need to eat. So that's something we have to look into obviously, but uh, we'll, Cross that, uh, I guess, path when we uh, we get to it next week. Let's go into that snake room and uh, take a look and see what we got. All right, guys, we're doing a little cleaning. Pablo and I have this, and I'm noticing how big these snakes have gotten over this off season. This is uh, an eclipse. That's a leopard with the motley gene. We get a solid black chocolate looking snake, and she's had albino. Uh, I produced this girl a couple years ago. And she's ready to go. She's gonna breed this year, for sure. What I breed her to, I have no idea yet, but she's got nice, nice size in her. Nice thickness, very healthy. Um, I think she's gonna do really well for us. I love eclipses. And look at that girl. <laughs> oh, this is the fun part. Now we don't have to feed these guys for the next three months. <laughs> Thank God, right? Less cleaning, less rodent bill. All right, this is Pablo's favorite. Uh, this is Satan right here. <laughs> Although it's a she, so Satana, Satana maybe we can call her. Or Lucifer. Lucifer. And uh, she's going, she's getting ready to get Pablo. Right, Pablo? <laughs> she, like, she loves to bite Pablo. <laughs> this is our head, BTIT Pazza female. We got, picked her up this year. Big girl. Don't want to get bit by her for sure. Sneak around the table and grab Pablo. Get him right in the butt. That's how we do it here. One of those pythons and bows. Get that water bowl in there. Nice fresh water. Most important thing, guys, fresh water with your, with your snakes. Because uh, it gets slimy. Even though there's water left in the bowl, if you start seeing like stuff floating in there and slime, you, get, you, you gotta change it. All right. This one is, uh, I wanted to show you this girl. I've shown you her before, she's growing. This is a triple head, sterling, para head, which means she's either head for albino or uh, she's head for bow woman caramel. She's head for blood. She's also a, uh, has some sort of Russo red pastel in her as well. I don't think she, I don't think we hit hypo with her. She doesn't look hypo to me. So, but she, the Russo red pastel, we'll see more if we, once again, if we, Hit the hypo with her when we breed her at some point. Think about this, sterling, which is solid, patternless, blood, which is red, and then para, you know, you can either get like a paradigm, we can get we can get sharp albino, or we can get a T positive, bowl and carol T positive. So this this is gonna be a pretty crazy solid snake when we breed this to the male. We have, uh, we have four girls and one male, so one of these is gonna go first, and. I'll only be able to really breed one per year, so we'll see. But great, 
like that. There's potential. See that stripe? Pat Sterling does that. Usually Hypo will mess with the saddles too, but I don't, I don't see Hypo. This is really dark. She's really dark. So, got to be the head sterling. All right, guys. One of my favorite females. I hope she breeds this coming season. IMG, that's increasing melanistic gene. As you can see, she's about as dark as you can be. Of course, she has Motley, because we know Motley and IMG make a totally black snake. She's also Roswell Ladder Tail, which you really can't tell, obviously, because she's a completely black snake. But what's even more impressive is that she's het blood and she's het for call albino. So she's essentially het red dragon. So imagine IMG motley red dragons. Oh boy, would that be awesome. And we have just the red dragon to bring to her, to her Pablo. If you remember, we have two males actually. I might even, she's so important. I might put two males in with her just, just for shits and giggles. She is, this is, I think our blackest snake right now, probably. You can see the iridescence right here. If I took her outside, you would see the rainbow. You know, of, of iridescence on the snake. She's we slow grew her. She's got some nice size in her now, and I think I think she might go this year. I think she's I think she's got the mature muscle on her. I'm feeling. Uh, we're gonna try to breed her for sure. So cleaning day never ends here at Columbus by the most. All right, this is what we love to have uh, boas for, right? Put them around our neck. Hypo leopard. Pet call albino. Look at that belly. Look at that red belly. That's what the hypo gene so does to leopard. We know leopard is dark, but when you strip away some of the darkness with one copy of hypo, you get that red coming out. When you do it with two copies of hypo, you get a really, really red snake. So take it away, take the black away with albino, you're gonna get a really, really nice looking snake. So that's why everyone loves leopard albinos. But this girl's really cool. I, I really want what I really want to use her for is to make hypo eclipses so you saw the eclipse before it was like a chocolate color the hypos are kind of a reddish solid reddish color so probably try to do that this year i think she's gonna go now leopards are not massively big snakes so the albino gene of course will those are bigger snakes so she's kind of like an intermediate she's not really a dwarf but she's kind of like in between she might need another year i don't know she looks like she's big enough to me but i'm not in any rush to breed her i might just wait another year i got i have plenty of uh potential eclipse stuff this year. All right, guys, this is probably the last snake of the day. This female is a paradigm blood that I bred a couple a couple years back now. She'll probably breed this year. So that's the paradigm. That's one copy of Sharp Albino, one copy of Bow Woman Caramel. Acts like a super form, we call it paradigm. And then blood, which is recessive. So it's really like double homozygous animal, gorgeous. You know, it's a T-positive-ish blend with albino combined with blood. And you can see all the pinks in here and like light reds. But yet it still has some dark pigment because it's not completely a T-negative albino. Beautiful snake. I love Paradigm Bloods. I'm one of the first people I think to produce Paradigm Bloods. And, you know, I, I've just always loved them. And so this girl is going to, I don't know who we're breeding her to yet this year, but she's going to go to someone, you know. And she's got some nice size in her. These snakes are big snakes too, the females especially. So hopefully you guys like it. Hey, we got a little quick update on this bow litter. A lot of people, a few people have asked me about how this went. This was the Phantom and uh, Blizzard litter. So this is, this, this litter is, is predicated on the black eyed anery gene. So that Ralph Davis reptile black eyed anery gene, which removes yellows and reds. Um, this is also, this particular snake is also a paradigm, which is 100% head sharp albino, 100% head boa woman caramel, which is a teeth positive uh, albino. Have one copy of each, you get this like intermediary or acts like super form called the paradigm. So you have this paradigm, which is usually a creamy orangey color. You take out the orange or you take out the red, I should say, and the yellows and you're left with this like ghost-like looking guy we call the phantom he's also got a co one copy of the hypo gene as well he's got he's gotten more pattern in him actually he's gotten a little older we have a couple of these guys let me see this this one is i think another brother let's see how this one looks this one's lighter yeah this is a lighter one so more goes probably maybe one or two maybe two copies of hypo gene here they all have black eyes though as you can see that black eyed anery gene really really striking 
type of snake. These are getting a little bigger. They've been eating really well. I think we have another one here. Here's our female phantom that just um, shed out. So you can see the shed right there. She's looking really, really clean. Once again, a really cool genetic powerhouse. It's really, it's a moon glow using the Ralph Davis Reptile Black Eyed Anery gene. Um, very desirable gene. Once again, because it removes not only reds, but also yellows too. So these snakes never yellow out. Now here's our, our male blizzard reproduced. So this is a soup, but this is a super hypo blizzard. So super hypo, sharp albino, black eyed anery. So it's like a black eyed anery super moon glow, essentially. If you, if you accept this, this anery gene that we use, this black eyed anery removes yellows too. So this snake will never yellow out. It'll always look super white. And his sister is right next door here. Let's see if we can get her. Here's his sister. Let's bring her over here. There's his sister. She doesn't want to participate. She's beautiful too. These snakes will just stay crystal, crystal white colored. They will never ever turn yellow or nothing. They're just gonna stay. They're gonna look just as amazing right here as they are later in life. So that's something we don't see in boas, especially in albinos, because albinos yellow out. Because that's all boas as they age get yellow in them. And that's how we know that this black eyed anery gene is not just an aneuthristic gene, which removes red, it also removes yellows. Um, once again, the father is as white as it could be. And the day he was, I got him, never turned any other color. And so if you like a white snake, like I, I love a white boa. It's, uh, it's almost got like a pink, pinkish white to it. Whereas the super fires have a really, really just like almost, al I call it alpine white, because I compare it to my, my BMW white, they call it alpine white. This is like a pinkish white, which is probably from the albino aspect of it, you know? Whereas the super fires are not albinos, they're leucistics, which just means they have no pigment. Um, these guys can have pigment but, and pattern, but this, they, they don't have any pattern because they're super hypos, so. Really nice looking baby. Here's a super hypo paradigm, or possible super hypo, I think it's super hypo. So two copies of hypo gene probably with the paradigm, which is 100% head sharp albino, 100% head bow woman caramel, and then it's het black eyed anery. So this has reds and yellows in it. Um, it's just het, but it's very clean looking and uh, really nice looking basically sun glow, or I should say paraglow, snake here. And here's the sharp version of that. So that's a possible super, I think it's a super hypo. Sharp albino, so super sun glow, we can call this. Het for RDR, Ralph Davis Reptile, or, um, Black Eyed Anery. So this carries the gene for that, but it's not expressing it phenotypically. But look at how reduced the saddles are. That's from two genes, uh, two copies of the hypo gene. Obviously, this, this snake has red eyes because it's a sharp albino. And just a really, really nice sharp. Very clean. And I'm going to start selling some of these. I think some of these will come available soon. I like to grow my bows up before I really sell them. I don't like to sell them off too, too early. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. A little bit of a quick hit today. Mondays are always pretty crazy, as you know. And, uh, you know, this is gonna be a, a busy week for us because hopefully, you know, my olive python outdoor enclosures are gonna be finished up. That's something we wanna get over here. And I, you know what, I, I'm thinking very, very seriously about maybe keeping the croc monitors, buying them for my friend Shane and maybe putting them into the olive python enclosure I built because I have, it's pretty, pretty elaborate. I might put the olive pythons in the other enclosure I have outside. So that's something I can consider. Uh, we got to be taking a look, hopefully, at uh, some eggs are going to be hatching in the next week or so. Yes, we still have eggs in the incubator. It's incredible, I know. But we do, probably. And, and we have no place to put stuff either. <laughs> that's the real problem. So we'll be uh, looking into where we're going to start. We're going to have to move some snakes around, obviously, to make room. And uh, it, would, it actually might be a nice little bit of a reprieve for a couple of months to have no new baby snakes. I know I love to showcase them on this video, you know, little, I guess you could say vlog we do, but sometimes it's just nice not to have any more 
and to try to start moving some of the stuff we have and then prepare for next year. So that's the uh, plan. Guys, I hope you are having a, you had a good weekend and I hope you guys have a great week planned. My kids are home again another week. Can you believe it? Schools are still not open here. I'm going to go crazy. We're looking into putting them in some kind of like gymnastics camp for the week. <laughs> At least two of them. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.